Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel G-Man Interviews slash Purple Sky Awakening. It's a great honor and great privilege. we got two heavyweights tonight. We have with us from Naya's Corner of the Universe dot com. And it's also the name of our YouTube channel. we got Naya. Hey, Naya, how you doing? Hello, hello. And also we got with us Rich Locke coming back. His YouTube channel is Rich Locke. He also has a Facebook channel. Rich, what's the name of your Facebook channel if you want to give her a plug? Uh, my profile and my page are just the same right now. They're both just my name, the same as YouTube. Okay. So this is a real privilege. I'm going to pretty much get out of the way and let you two guys just bounce off each other. So take it away, Naya. All right. Hey. Nice to see you. I've missed yeah, you. Yeah, you too. You. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a minute since we've all kind of sat and collaborated. So I kind of I took a bit of a strange direction there with the whole astrology thing. I know that was actually... That was actually not a plan at all, and uh, it kind of snuck up on me. And I fought against it for a while, but I just kept getting the nudge. You know, it was it was complete accident, and I kept getting the nudge. That's what you're supposed to do. Keep right. talking about that. Right. I finally gave in and was like, okay, this is what everybody wants to hear. So I didn't mean to abandon anybody or anything like that. You but it, it, you didn't. I think it's fascinating. I know nothing about all that astrology stuff. I had no idea that there were all those attitudes about Aquarius. I've only, <laughs> I've only met two Aquarius in my life. One was by accident for about an hour. The other one uh, was a bad Aquarius, and I didn't want to meet him again. And that was it. So it's weird to hear Aquarius talk, and it's even weirder to hear all these things that people think about us that I didn't know about. Yeah, it, um, I, I mean, I... Uh, when I very first started looking into astrology, I was, I want to say 19 years old, and I was extremely skeptical, but uh, but I kept hearing my little girlfriends and stuff talking about it, and I thought, man, whatever, and, and this one day, I started to look into it, and I read the Aquarius description, and I was like, huh, that's awfully weird that they <laughs> are so close to me, and then because of that, obviously, I'm sure that's pretty much the reason why everybody gets into it. They want to know about their self first. So I started saying to myself, you know, years ago, well, I'm going to I'm going to see how this fits into pretty much everyday life. And it, it yeah, it's not too terribly uncommon in the astrological community. for Nobody understands the Aquarius sign. It's like so like popular and dominant that. We're the weirdos, you know, it's insanely intelligent and very wise beyond our years, but very weird, unpredictable and unemotional. And and uh, if you dig through YouTube, you'll see like lots of women putting up videos why they'll never date an Aquarius man and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, it didn't actually tip me off to doing it until I, I, I told the story in one of my live videos. But uh, I had two years ago, actually. A friend of mine who was, we had been very good friends. She, she's, she's a woman, a Scorpio woman, and she came to me and initiated a friends with benefits type of relationship. And long story short, she wasn't able to hold up to her end of the bargain on it. it caught some feelings when I was like, look, no, that, you know, when what you came to me and proposed, essentially. And she kind of threw a, a few little snickering, you know, stabs in there about me being an Aquarius. And, I guess she knew which button to push because that played in my head for weeks. So one day when I was drunk, I had this idea in my head, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on YouTube and, and this is going to be a big thing, you know. So I sat and I recorded that video and did maybe a few others. Completely forgot all about it. Completely forgot about it. And uh, th that was when I was still living in Kentucky. That was before I moved out west, before I moved here. And then back this past, I want to say December. I'm sitting there scrolling through YouTube while I've got all this other stuff going on. I got this business that I had started, you know, network marketing. I'm doing my YouTube channel, which was, you know, what the content pretty much uh, had, what did it come to, you know, something along the spiritual path. And it says recommended video, Rich Love, the brutal truth about Aquarius had like 30 or 40,000 views. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, what the hell? You know, I don't even remember putting that on YouTube. And this little voice in me was kicking me, saying, that's it. That's it. And I'm thinking, oh, no, man, I don't want to talk about all that. So I fought against it for a 
while. And it, I just kept getting that kick, you know. And that's it. That's what that's what you need to talk about right now. You you know, tens of thousands of people are, are loving what you have to say about this. And I'm just, no, and I don't want to go there. So finally, I was like, well, I have no idea how to get into that channel. I don't remember the email address I used, the password, none of that. So I figured on my birthday, I was like, I'm going to try this little experiment and see if I can make a part two to that and see if the audiences will link up because it, it was racking up like a thousand views a week. And I think, I'm not sure what it's at right now, probably about 60 or 70,000, maybe the last time I looked. And, and uh, But yeah, it went ahead and linked up. And everybody kind of made the correlation and that's what everybody's just been, you know, coming at me, wanting to know more, asking more questions. So I really do kind of want to shy away from it, but it doesn't look like that's wanting to happen anytime soon. So, well, yeah. I I am just shocked. I didn't know that people were that interested in us. I pretty much got the same thing my whole life, that you're weird. And uh, the best thing I ever heard that really kind of is exactly the way my life has been is a saying that I heard about Aquarians. And it said, Aquarians march to the tune of a drum of a different, different drummer that nobody yeah. else can hear, but everybody wants to follow. And yeah. that's, much, yeah. that's been the way people are with me. They have no idea what I'm saying. It's way worse since I died. But it was true before that I was just a little bit out there, a little bit weird. And I just kind of wrote it off to me being weird. I just didn't ever correlate it with Aquarian particularly. I just yeah. thought that was part of it. But then I saw you and... And the Empress over there, and I was going, whoa, what is going on with the Aquarians? Why does everybody care about little old us all of a sudden? <laughs> and I sure as heck didn't know about a special deacon. I don't know anything about that either. I don't either. Um, but there for the first probably month or so, I would try to make it a point. I would get an email every time somebody would subscribe to my channel. YouTube would send me a quiet notification. That was the only one they would send me. And then I would get an email, such and such, subscribe to you on YouTube. So after I started doing the Aquarius thing, that was happening quite frequently. At least five times a day, somebody would subscribe to me. And uh, I would always go and check out their channel. Because at the time, I didn't have much of that up. So I was I was trying to see, okay, like look through their list of videos. Either one of mine that they like, maybe a different, you know, just, just to see my general audience, what it is that they would like and to see if they have any content up. 99% of the time, as you as you know, the majority of YouTube viewers don't don't have any content. They don't make videos. And uh, I, I remember, I, I honestly don't, uh, sometimes, but you know, of course, you know, you get a bunch of comments on one video, it gets hard to keep up with them all. So sometimes, uh, to be 100% honest, what I'll do is I'll just skim through the first few lines, and as long as it's not negative, I'll hit the, hit the heart button, <laughs> you know? I hate to make it sound impersonal, but you know, I'm pretty busy sometimes. Well, anyway, I had noticed her several times, you know, and uh, finally the, the, the last one she sent me, I went to her channel and it showed that she had, she's making videos. And I'm like, oh man, well, that's, that's awesome. It's not all that common that you see somebody actually putting in the work, you know, right. because, you know, it's really easy to sit back and watch videos and and hide behind your comments and, and, you know, talk shit and spit your opinions. But nobody wants to get behind a camera. So when, when I saw somebody subscribe to me that was actually putting in the work and putting in the effort, you know, I was like, I respect that. And I was like, damn, she's not really getting all that much content or all that much traffic right now. So I, I wanted to I did what I could to try to help her, you know, get some because I think it's some interesting stuff, you know. Yeah, so, I like her. We talked to her last night. I like her. Yeah, I, like I caught her. some of that. We had, we had fun. It's two female Aquarians talking fast, so poor G-Man didn't stand a chance, but we had fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Rich, I got, yeah. a, I got a question for you, Rich. Your, What's up? your question and answer videos, I really enjoy those, by the way. And um, I think the last one you did, someone asked like a basic question, and you seem kind of annoyed. You said you're not going back to the basics, you're kind of tired of it, you don't have the time with it. Um, why is that you think? And why well, are a perfect example is kind of like you can see Naya here. If you go back and you it, and my girlfriend and I, at least for a good four or five months straight, was avid. Would like right before we went to bed every night. Ah, oh, your mom put up a new video and we sit and watch them. 
And but if you go through and look, you can see sometimes it almost seems like she's responding to the same things over and over. And nobody, because for me, honestly, um, I remember G Man actually, and it's so funny that it worked out this way because the very two people who started the whole process for me that lady, I believe her name's Kelly or, or Jessica. I don't remember her name. Shit. <laughs> and then Rich Kelly were the two people, the first two people that, that I heard talking about these concepts, about what this life really is. And for the first time, it, it was like, that's the first thing I've ever heard that makes sense, you know, because I've just kind of had this fire burning inside of me for years. None of this seems right. This, this Nothing seems right about any of this at all. And nobody seems to have the answer. And... Finally, when I stand, it's so funny. You interviewed those two, interviewed those two people. But uh, for me, it was kind of like once I heard it, it immediately clicked. Ah, that's that's what I need to gravitate towards. The people who I, I don't really know a way to word it. But uh, long story short, though, the more research that I did and the further that I dug, it just kind of seemed like as far as like, and I hate using the words like spiritual awakening and enlightening and all that shit, but that's, you understand what I mean when I say that, right? Yeah. But, uh, so when it comes to that whole thing, it kind of seems to me, it feels like that if you can't understand that this is essentially all just a big game with no real punishment in it and just a big set of experiences and that there is no final Oh, you know, somebody watching over you and judging what you do. And one of these days, you have to pay a price. You know, that seems to be the, for thousands of years, that's what everybody has lived under, that kind of fear. And it's in, 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 in the New Age movement kind of thing, uh, it, it seems like that principle, if you don't get that, I don't really know what you're doing. So... It just, it, it's really frustrating to me. I, I, I came to terms with that. It was very easy for me to come to terms with that. It, that was easier to, to come to terms with than the fact that, holy shit, you mean I'm here in this one little life, and if I accidentally fuck something up, then I got to go burn for eternity? <laughs> that was harder. I, that never made any sense to me. No. So so once I heard, oh, okay, okay, this is more along the lines, something similar to something scripted out, and just that made so much more sense to me. That, and, and I don't really, because to me, I honestly believe that people make the choice not to accept that because they're too afraid, because that's what their identity is based upon. Every single thing that, you know, everything, everything in their life that makes them who they are is based on that bullshit. So if, if they was to turn another way and look at it and say, oh, okay, well, um, maybe a, a little kid, something really, really bad that happened to a little kid. That little kid came here to experience that. You know, it's not as bad as it seems. You know, any anything bad you've ever experienced, you knew about. It. If you, I don't, I think that people are just too afraid to look at that because it would, it, they, they would feel like their identity is gone, like they wouldn't exist anymore. So, for me, I have so little patience with, with trying to hammer the same point to somebody's head that I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to get more patient with it. That's why I, no, I say I like, I really respect you. <laughs> your tenacity. You you <laughs> seem to like have no problem telling it over oh, and over. Oh, me, I'm, oh seriously. I, I, I get to the end of my rope too. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sort out the difference between the ones that came to never remember and the ones that are on the verge of remembering. And those are the people that I sort between because I do want to go that extra mile for the ones that are almost there, but I don't want to interfere at all with the ones that have no intention of ever doing. Now, sometimes those two people look very much alike in the light of day. So it takes a couple, two, three questions to see if they're willing to bend. And then sometimes it's, People that are playing much more intense games that need a little bit of extra help. And I can tell what their purpose is. And I'll give them a little bit more help, whereas somebody else will go, hey, dude, just go away. Uh, we are not playing this game. But I can read the vibration so much better that I'm getting more and more at just go away. 
which is probably why my channel stays about the same size, is because I get somebody in that go, ah, oh, this isn't the right place for you. Please unsubscribe from me and go somewhere else. Right. Because I am very, very specific about who I talk to. I've got 500 videos out. They pretty much say, wouldn't you agree? They cover just about the basics. If you can't yeah. understand those basics, then, uh, and, and I'm starting the website where we're going a lot deeper, but you got to come to the website to talk because I'm tired of messing around with the ones that are asking the same question over and over, expecting me to change my answer. And that's what right, they right. like. If I keep asking it again and again, I eventually will say it my way. No, I'm not going to change my mind. A uh, dead person here. Dead people right. don't change their minds. Dead people don't. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually tried to come out and, and, and talk again about my NDEs a couple of times. And, and honestly, like, I don't know. The whole the whole topic as far as, like, sometimes I'm in the biggest internal battle because uh, I, I'm not 100% sure why. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that I'm not supposed to remember 100% or it would throw me off track because every time I start to fall into a state of remembering the other side, I get it for like two seconds and this involuntary ego body response gets scared to death that I'm about to leave and it like grabs on and holds it and then it bam goes away. I forget all about it. And with, with my NDEs, like I said, the most vivid one was that one. Uh, and I didn't go very far over. I think I just like maybe a just right into the next density because uh, I could quite literally see through the veil, quite literally. And it, it, it very much felt physical like this, only just a fraction lighter, just a fraction. It wasn't very far over there at all, you know, and then I could actually hear sounds inside my head. It wasn't, it, it was the same as seeing and hearing, only it wasn't like everything coming from the outside in. It was like everything coming from the inside out. Yeah. You know, Inside and uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's somewhat correlates with what I hear a lot of people say, but it, it still seems a bit atypical because, uh, like, I mean, I could, like, everything seems so relative, like, like it related so well to this here, like the beings had human form and I could hear seven or eight different people talking in my head at the same time. I could hear their voices. Only the cool thing about it was there was like eight or nine of them talking at one time. And I could understand what every single one of them were saying, and I could respond to them all simultaneously. But and as soon as I said to myself, eh, "This is boring," <laughs> man, I was gone and yeah. into some other place, you know. And, yep. and I come back though, I'm like, man, that is nothing like what I've heard before. That still, that sucked. That wasn't like nothing, you know. <laughs> so I, I try not to to touch too much on it because me, I kind of feel guilty sometimes because it's like, hey, I've been to and other side or you know whatever you want to call it but i didn't come back with all of the information everything that i have to tell you is basically makes me feel kind of guilty because sometimes i feel like it might be faith -based. but uh for some reason it's the only thing that makes sense to me it's the only thing that uh, resonates as it were you know so um that's why sometimes i kind of pull back from it because i i i, I feel guilty on the inside if I feel like I'm talking uh, without the credentials, do you understand what I'm saying? So, well, you see, Rich, what happened? If you want to know, I'm assuming you want to know what oh, happened. Yeah. You went way the effing, but the effing out there. I know because I was with you. I know where you went. That's the reason why I was surprised you didn't say anything. The trouble with you is you really don't have any patience with people. So it is so difficult to describe what that is over there, and you've tried. And just the beginning of trying, they pretty much dissed you. So you just kind of blew it off. Well, well, fuck you then. I don't care. You're not going to listen. I'm not going to try. But in the things that you say, the way that you live, your moment to moment tells on you because you brought it back with you in the way you exist. So even uh -huh. if you don't remember the moment-to-moment -moment experience, you brought the knowingness back with you. And you answer people with it. You interact with other people with it. You do it all the time. And that is your credentials for me. 
you brought it back with you in that knowingness of how this stuff works. Now, just because you can't explain the trip, because, uh, gee, it is a uh, really, really hard to explain to linear time, simple minded humans what it's like out there because it is so big. So to be able to translate that to somebody so they can get you to listen to them. Yeah, you don't have the patience for it. So you get frustrated. So cool. You've done it a different way. There's nothing wrong with the way you do it. Because what you've done is you've decided to live the life through what you found out. Then people come to you. And you don't have to go to them and you don't have to prove yourself. They come to you because of the way you exist. And they feel that something is different because of the way you are. The beingness that you are. And you brought that back with you. So do what you want to do. Keep doing it your way. Don't do it anybody else's way. This way works best for you. And people are drawn to it. You are, just by interacting with them, you translate different vibrations, different way of thinking, different understandings that are beyond words. So don't worry about the way other people have done it, or even me. Just do what you're doing because you're doing a beautiful job. And I couldn't be prouder. I appreciate it. it uh, here in the last few weeks, though, it's been difficult to see that, that bigger picture. I don't know if anybody else has been feeling it, but, oh, man, it, it's the, the energy I've been feeling has been extremely rough. Okay, well, like, so the, the Mario and I said a bunch of people and a lot of the entities have been bringing in Divine Masculine in mass, and it's been tough. So anybody that you've interacted with, male or female, that were not allowing the Undivine to dissipate and change, transmute into the Divine, it will probably be a pain in the ass in your life. Now, because of yesterday... Gaia hit the planet with Divine Feminine, had enough. So now it's a double tidal wave. So you really, 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 really have to let this stuff flow. Because if you start thinking about it, it is going to, well, it's going to be very, very upsetting. So don't ride the tidal wave. Don't think about it. It is, no joke. it is no joke. I have no idea. I've never seen anything like this. I've, I've been feeling every ounce of it. I've been sober for a year now, and this has been the hardest struggle of the whole time because it's it's very overwhelming. With, and wh where I live, I live in a small little town, and, uh, 80 percent nature. There's no drama. It's just I feel it. It's yeah. it's been it's been rough. I've been visiting some dark places <laughs> because just, of these. Just, just let it. Let it flow through you. Just say, hey, it's just a game. Hey, it's just a game. Don't stay and think about any of it. You'll be fine. If you stop and think about any of them, you'll fall into the tidal wave and it'll beat, the, beat you up bad. So just pop up and just smile. Go, nope, I get it. It's another part of the game. Guy was just, you are on timelines with me and I'm very, I'm very impatient about where I'm going. And she kind of had enough. And it shocked me, too, because I didn't think that she would ever do it. I thought she'd send it through the bodies. But I talked to her to verify it. I did go talk to Gaia. And she's sweet. She is the nicest being ever. But in a nice, nice, nice way, she just said, enough's enough. I'm just going to do it myself. And the Divine Masculine was in solid enough. It's not great, but it's in solid enough that she could do her thing. And then I went up to the sun to check with him because he runs the Divine Masculine side. And I said, hey, you guys got this together because uh, I wasn't quite sure about that. And he said, yeah, no problem. He said, she's going to bring it in. It's, it's going to be consistent. You have every ability. Every human has every ability to ride this out. It's not that bad. But it'll ride out until the partial solar eclipse that's in August, whatever date that is. I don't know. And then he the said, 11, by the way. okay, he said at that point, he's going to take and balance the divine masculine and feminine, and he's going to supercharge it. And that will be kind of a day of rest, I would imagine, and balance them at the same time. 
So in other words, you are now on timelines where uh, it's moving faster to the divine feminine and masculine really being on the planet, not the New Agers. I don't talk to them. I talk to Gaia and, and the sun. And they're in charge, in my opinion. They're right. the people I talk to. I don't talk to anybody else. I talk to the ones in charge. And they, they've got it, and they know what they're doing. But I do try to tell people, you try to do your human, egotistic, think this thing out, and it will be very, very unpleasant. This is the time to learn to ride that wave. If you've ever learned to go with the flow, this is the time to do it the best you've ever done it. Seriously. That's the way I like to roll. <laughs> yes, you can. So don't, even when those tough things, because those tough things are, they all have to transmute. So you have to be able to see all that negative divine masculine and feminine and just laugh it off and go, yeah, that was a part of the game in 3D. It's no more. Just laugh it off. And I know that's hard, man. I've been triggered a thousand times in the since it began, oh, and yeah. uh, I'm with the long. I'm living with the long-term human of all things. So you think yeah. I don't have a, a? I'm having a fun time riding this wave. Well, I'm doing it firsthand. So trust me, ride the wave and don't stop. Do your Aquarian thing. Don't stop. Don't stop ever. Yeah, it was today. Was probably the worst day of all. Uh, I, I got into a bit of an internal battle. I, I well, first of all, I don't like this game. I, I don't know. like. It. We I, I don't know why. I, know I, I don't know why I came and decided to do this stupid shit, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, I do agree. Okay, if, if everything is divinely planned, that's cool. But uh, just please exclude me from any future plans or whatever that <laughs> has to do with this. I don't like it at all. I don't like duality. I don't um, need you know, it's like, it, it, well, I even remember thinking about this as a kid. Opposition has to exist in order for any of this to work, for me to be able to do this. Right. The frequencies have to be low enough and slow enough to be able to travel in opposite directions and stop each other. Right. Right. And that, that idea works with everything. Everything. There is right. not happiness without sadness there is right. not up without down there is not right without left the list right. goes on and on and on i it's don't good. like it because you know it's it's almost like and i and i know this sounds kind of rhetorical and cliche but it's almost like as soon as you feel that big burst of happiness it almost feels like there's that sadness just tugging on you like ha, ha, ha. you know yeah. i'm here too i have to be in order for that to be there you know and it's just like man fuck this <laughs> excuse me I, that was <laughs> i'm trying to uh, the only thing that I, I do to deal with that is to look at G-Man and look to, at the other long-term humans, and they do love it. It is their game. We are interfering in their game. We're here temporarily. It's just a temporary thing. You'll be out sooner than you can imagine. Trust me. It will be. But when it's over, you won't even hardly remember it. And it will be that fast. You did come to help Gaia. She will say thank you. She loves you a lot. It will make sense someday. But in the meantime, the best thing to do is to go, you, you don't have to, even though they give you a hard time, you got me, and I go, I don't like it either. I'm not coming back. I came to help a friend, and I'm out of here, folks. I understand that you enjoy the game, have fun. I, I've seen it from the outside. I get that the contrast is a high. I get what they're going for. It's just not my gig at all and i feel for you i'm right here going damn if we could just get the job done and go home i did what i want to do get the job done and go home yeah but i, I you know well it's yeah it makes it easier to think about it that way a lot easier um because i mean going back to what i was saying again about my nde before that um that part of the game isn't even enjoyable there's nothing I haven't I haven't seen anything within the duality game that's interesting, that's fun, that that captures my attention and makes me go, ooh, I want to pour all my energy into it. I've watched but, uh, you, you know, I've watched you for what a year almost that I've like watched that, yeah. you, and I you know because I know where you went when you had your NDE. I know exactly where you went, and I think that the reason why you don't remember is if you did remember, 
that you would leave. And you're not ready to leave because you've got a job to finish. Because that's the only explanation. Because you went way out there. But if you remember it, um, and I understand that because I remember it all. And it makes it much harder to step day by day here. It makes it much harder. So I think yeah. that's what you're doing. Well, I, I think that the main thing that I feel so unsettled with when it comes to what I don't remember is there's maybe I'm pretty sure this is just the ego body talking because I, it, 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 it's so uncomfortable. I don't like it. But uh, and I know this is this is going to sound so typical. So many people say this, but I cannot help but relate to it. If I just had the slightest clue, could like really like substantially see and understand as it were, why I'm here in the first place. I think it would be a little bit easier for me to carry it out, maybe, possibly. But then again, there's another part of me that says, no, if you knew that, then it, it, it wouldn't, none of it would work. So it's, yeah. No, it's, you, it's, you've, it's, got it, you've got it right. The first time you think that understanding would clarify it and make it easier, then you follow it with, no, it'd make it harder. And I guarantee you, you think the, the second one is right. Because I am the second one. It does not make it easier at all. If I could choose to go back in more amnesia today, I would do it in a heartbeat. Because it's so much harder knowing that this is literally nothing. That this is so tiny and insignificant that when I'm done, I'll have to concentrate to even remember this life. It's so tiny. So it makes it very difficult to walk day by day, to mow the front yard, to feed my body, to take care of my dog. If those things are so tiny, they're so unimportant to the big picture, it makes it incredibly difficult. So walk your walk the way you've chosen it. Trust yourself. You know what you're doing. You know what well, you're that, doing. That whole idea that you just spoke of right there, before I ever even... Before I ever even attempted suicide, I was essentially saying those things because that's just the way it instinctually felt for me. And uh, I was stuck in counselor's office and they were shoving pills down my throat because I was saying those things that, that something about me, something told me that this is so like, I can't say, I can't say wholeheartedly meaningless because obviously the, ex, the imprint of the experience is, it means something for whatever reason, but it's just so insignificant and minuscule that, that I would just rather not. But, you know, here, here with the, the people who, who have fun playing this game, that, that so you can't say that or we're going to stick you in a, you know, a padded room with a straight jacket on and shove pills down your throat to keep you retarded, but breathing, you know, as long as you're breathing, it makes me happy. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's all that matters. Well, you know. Rich, honey, you know, I am the vibratory person, and I, I need you to know this, that your being on the planet where you exist and stand is a major help to Gaia in this transition. It's not a little help. It's a major one. The, the ones that come that are the most in distress, the starseeds that come and put their feet on the ground and walk day to day, with the most distress, help the most. You knew that before you came here. You knew you were going to hate it. You knew it was going to suck. You knew that. But the option to put your feet on the ground and help Gaia outweighed that. And that's why you don't let yourself, you know, kind of get too much information and run out of here. Because you do make a lot of difference just by being here. It's important. It's very, very important. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll cling on to that right there. That'll be my go-to place. All right. <laughs> you remember that. You remember that. All Gaia's, right. Guy is screaming in my ear, so do not not listen to her. It's cool. very important. Now, you have a choice. You can leave at any time, but gosh, she really hopes you don't. She right, really right. hopes that you'd stick around because you really hope. Because with the Divine Masculine, especially, especially right now, this transition is very important. We really need you to be here, so please don't leave. If I'm yeah, here, not. you've got to be here. I'm not planning on it. 
What's up over there, G-Man? You've been quiet. Yeah, just listening to you guys. That's good. <laughs> so, cool, Rich, cool. Uh, here's a question for you, Rich. And what, what do you think the future of your channel is going to be? What direction are you going to go? Well, I wasn't going to say it, uh, but I, I have uh, something that I, I'm at least going to I'm going to put on and I'm going to do it for about a month. Um, I'm going to I'm going to read tarot cards. Oh. Um, yeah, it, it as, soon, as soon as I got the nudge for that, that was about a month and a half ago. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. And so I, I mentioned it in one of my videos and I got a lot of people saying, yes, please do that. Um, there's a part of me that really doesn't want to, but I just something's nudging me to do that. You know, there's so many people on YouTube that do that. Um, and it's it's kind of silly in a way, but I mean, it, uh, it's something that I'm actually interested in. I really like, uh, you know, playing with things like that. I've been getting the nudge to do that. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, my, my plan was the first day of fall, but it'll actually probably be here in about two weeks, maybe. I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to run with that. That's not all it's going to be by any means. So if you start seeing all these uh, videos pop up of every astrological sign, general tarot reading of the energy, uh, that's not going to be all it's about. I'm definitely going to talk about things still in between stuff like that. But that's the near future. As far as the far future goes, I really don't know. It's been kind of just going with whatever I feel called to talk about. Um, well, and, how can I, uh, and it, what's up? Can I give you a, a, a secret? Sure. Well, it doesn't really matter what you say because you, you're sending out and feeding energies of the divine masculine and balancing with the divine feminine in whatever words you use. It does not matter. It's the, it's the vibration of your beingness. I would like for you to do whatever it is you're having fun with because it's shooting everywhere, down through the planet and out. So do whatever it is you're doing having fun because you're naturally bringing in divine masculine and feminine into yourself and balancing them. So you will be doing whatever it is you're doing in that manner. So it doesn't matter what you're doing because you're doing that too. I'd like to say too, well, uh, I'd like to say real quick, Rich, that uh, you're right. There's a lot of tarot card channels out there and I know yours would be a lot different because whatever you do you bring a distinctness to it I, yeah. I mean, your, your personality the way you just cuss and throw it out there and don't give a shit I think you'll be really right. good at it I think it'll be enjoyable so, yeah. just, just speaking from my own personal the way I perceive all of this it, it always seems to roll the same way whatever I want to do the least is always what I'm supposed to do, you know. <laughs> whatever it's, whatever I always want to fight against, and I and I say no, I want to do it my way. Whatever it is that I want to do, is always a big no. You know, that's not the right thing. I always, that's another thing I hate about this damn game. <laughs> I can't stand it. It seems like everything I'm, I, I feel I'm supposed to do, and I'm getting the nudge, and I'm feeling the kick on my back, and I fight against it. I do. I'm, I'm like, I'm a stubborn smartass, to be honest with you. Like, and I'm, I'm doing so much better now that I'm, huh? That's what everybody likes. They like to see the yeah. stubborn smartass that's a nice guy. Absolutely. It's kind of a nice chain. But, uh... <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, but, yeah, and, and so when it comes to something like that, every time I get the nudge to, to do something, and it's like, it, like with the music thing, that's one that I'm still, like, fighting against. It's music, playing guitar. I've been a musician since I was nine years old, and, uh, I'm still, I still haven't taken that anywhere. I've been playing for about 22 years now, and I like to pick up and play every now and then once in a great while, but uh, when people when people start, oh, I want to hear more music, oh, please, God, no. Uh, that's one thing. Maybe one of these days I'll give in to that one and say, okay, and I'll get back into business and go into the recording studio and all that stuff, but right now that one's still just a big, there's something, something way in there that doesn't, uh, I don't know, but like that that one song that I put on my channel, yes. uh, that was the first song I'd written since I was 21, is, you know, is how far out of it I've fallen, so, but I don't know, maybe, maybe one of these days I'll do that on my channel, I have no idea, hey, Rich, going I, with it, you know? I got a question for you too, you said in one of your videos, <clears throat> you think you came here to live three lives into one, do you still feel that way or are you kind of mellowed out? 
It's, it's, uh, I don't remember throwing a specific number out there. If I did, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure which video it was or what I was talking about. But yeah, I feel like, like one of the things that I don't know if it's the reason I wanted to come here or if I just said, sure, I'll do that. I, I'm not 100% sure what it was, but um, to squeeze very, a lot of different experiences very highly contrast experiences into one little life, you know, and uh, to go from when I was, when I was uh, about two, my sister and I were taken, we were born into like poverty by, you know, alcoholic drug addicted parents taken out of there, raised by my grandparents in this upper middle class or kind of middle class Christian household, you know, and, all the opportunities in the world. And then I, what, whatever age, 14 or 15, decided to just rebel against it and start doing drugs and, and just went crazy, went batshit insane, put myself out on the streets. You know, I've been a, I've been in a biker gang, you know what I'm saying? Motorcycle riding, been in street racing gangs. I've been a paid musician. Uh, just, man, I could probably sit here for an hour and just name the, all the different lifestyles that I've lived. Very, very different lifestyles. And it kind of seems like your average person will take one of those lifestyles and span it out their whole life or most of it. You know, and it seems like I've, I've you know, when it comes to being homeless and living on the streets and, and uh, living in recovery centers and things like that and being an alcoholic and being a drug addict, being a family man and being a father, being a husband, all these different things that it just kind of seems like, Maybe I'm perceiving it wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's just my own little illusions. But it seems like most people will pick one of those, you know. And it's like not me. I'm like I'm only 30 years old, you know, young little young buck man. It's like I've experienced. And I don't like to say this kind of thing to brag because a lot of people like to say shit like that to brag, you know. And I'm not bragging about it because it's like uh, a lot of things could kill me. I've <laughs> been right on the brink of death with my foot in the grave for many, many times. You know, because of all the crazy things that I've experienced. But it just, I feel so strange. It's not uncommon whatsoever for somebody 15 to 20 years older than me coming to me for advice. I almost don't even want to do it. It just doesn't feel right. It's like, no, I, I go to you. I go to people in your age group for advice. That's what I do. That's what I'm supposed to do. You know, you've been around longer than me. You have more experience than me. I respect you for that. I don't feel right you coming to me asking me for advice. It just doesn't feel right at all, at all, at all. My grandpa raised me, you know, pretty much pounded it into my head that, you know, your elders have more life experience. It makes perfect sense, you know. So I just kind of have that, one of those, I guess that's one of my belief systems, you know. It's, it's pretty well in there that um, I, I feel like I'm supposed to be the young, stupid one. It's just... It just feels like that's the way it's supposed to be, but it's not uncommon at all. Like I said, for people 40, 50 years old coming to me asking me for advice. And I ain't going to lie, it makes me feel so uncomfortable and weird because uh, you, you can almost pretty much name one of my experiences, life experiences that I may have stressed out for six months to a year. And that's been their whole life, their whole 50 years, damn near, you know? So. Uh, yeah, to answer your question, I know I kind of trailed off on that, but yeah, I still, I still definitely feel that way. Yeah, it's, it's been a pretty intense ride. <laughs> something I picked up on, and maybe Naya could help answer this, is that you know people come to you for advice. You feel kind of awkward. You feel kind of awkward talking about your near death experience. You probably, you know, tarot cards. You feel kind of awkward about. Why is that? You think? Are you, you know? You don't seem like a shy person, but I kind of sense that maybe Naya can help uh, explain why that is. Well. As I've said before, Rich came onto the planet. I don't, I don't see Rich as Rich. I see Rich as another entity because we are we know each other well on the other side. So it's really hard for me to focus on him as a 30-year-old white male in the United States. It's really hard for me to do that. Now, I know him as an entity. I know exactly why he's done what he's done because I know the kind of entity he is. It was the only way that he could stay on this planet. He definitely leans towards energy work, more like me, not as high or big as I do, but definitely fast-paced, high vibrational stuff is what he does. That's why he's involved with balancing the divine masculine and the divine feminine. That is his expertise. 
That's why he came here. But he had to stay on the planet this long to get to this point. Now, how do you get to stay on a planet like this when you vibrate and come from that kind of entity when you don't have experience of being a long-term human? Well, the best way of doing it is to put yourself in difficult situations one right after the other to keep your ego and your body busy, 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 so you can't think and vibrate yourself right off the planet and leave your job. So well, that's exactly what he does. And he completely has done it. Now, I've watched this for a long time. Once I met him, all I do is go back into now time and see it. But right now, he's he's kind of got the hang of it, where he kind of has got this, well, I don't give a damn attitude, which is about right. And he can sit here going, this place sucks, but I can deal with it this way. So he's kind of got this balance thing. Plus, right about now, the vibration now is much higher than it was 10, 15 years ago, when it was much more difficult for him to do things. Things have improved, and even though most people don't know that, it has. The vibration has improved a lot, and it's improving much faster. So back 15 years ago, when you went on YouTube and said the things that Rich said, if people found you, you couldn't get a job in your small town. Now that's not true. Nobody gives a shit. You can say whatever you want on YouTube. Nobody's going to say anything. That's a big, significant difference, and it's a vibratory worldwide difference that makes it easier for somebody that was born on the planet very, very high, like Rich, that make, made it very difficult to stand on the planet his first 10, 20 years. Very difficult, which will start smoothing out. Number one, he's getting his sea legs on him. And number two, the sea is, is starting to smooth out, and he's getting the hang of it. So he will, over the course of the years to come, be very, very, very instrumental. And he'll get over this not talking to certain people. He'll talk to all of them eventually, because eventually the age thing will go away, because he won't see that anymore. He'll start seeing the entities instead of the aged human. And then he'll understand, oh, okay, the reason why this human who's appears to be 20 years older than me is asking for my advice is because he's a long-term human and his amnesia is so thick that he recognizes mine is not and he wants my my answers so that you can trigger him coming out of amnesia and that uh human aspect of linear time space and age and all of those judgments start to fade away and the young people are the leaders as the young people have always been they just will be magnificently so now as we head up to 5D. That was an awesome way to put it. <laughs> it actually lightens my mood up to hear it, you know. Good. It, it does. I, I would hope so. It's, been, it's, it's you know, I, I, I try my best to keep it to myself. Uh, but, yeah, it's been, it's been rough here lately. <laughs> and, I, you know, it's not really come as a surprise to me. Kind of knowing the energies that we're under, not only that, but with six planets being in retrograde at one time, good lord, man. Yeah, you know, but just with everything, I've been I've been feeling every ounce of staying quiet, staying quiet, you know, and, and but to actually hear it, it does help. Well, you know, it does help. even though you don't do it, you can call me anytime. I love talking okay. to you, so if you can pick up the phone, call me anytime. I love talking to you. And I will let you know how wonderful your energies are when they feel like they're crap. True. Cool. Whenever I can, when I can work myself into that habit, I have this like uh -huh. automatic reflex, this automatic retreat, an isolate reflex. You know, that uh, yeah, it's uh, really hard to think past. Uh, Aquarius. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey. I got, I got one last question for you. Okay. So, Rich, you've been doing the astrology signs, and I don't know if you're still going to continue all the way through them. Like I myself, I'm a Scorpio. Can you give me a quick mm -hmm. breakdown of a Scorpio? Well, Scorpio, see, my, my, my grandfather was a Scorpio, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's, it's kind of strange. That, that Scorpio and Gemini are the two hardest ones for me to talk about because... My grandma was a Gemini, my grandfather was a Scorpio, 
But with Scorpio, it's so hard to pinpoint because that's fixed water. So Aquarius is fixed air, Scorpio is fixed water, Taurus is fixed earth, and uh, Leo is fixed fire. So uh, with Scorpio, okay, so with the water element, essentially, and I had somebody comment on my video. I just watched it a few hours ago, like, oh, I don't, I don't understand the elements and blah, blah. I read the first, like, three lines, and it was a big, long book, and I was like, I can tell this is going to be something I want to read. It's going to piss me off. So I, I just skipped past it, but essentially the, the elements what we're looking at is just kind of a, a metaphor for for the, the 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 driving what drives your personality the most so like with water it's emotion the flow of emotion is essentially do you understand yeah. like uh with air aquarians and gemini and libra it's uh, air is thought and intellect water is emotion fire is passion and earth is like the material, you know, working and, and doing things physically, material, materialistic kind of things. So Scorpio, though, uh, is probably my favorite water sign, actually, just being fixed, just being just because there's there's the really good things about the fixed signs and, and the bad things like two fixed signs. don't want to argue. <laughs> my wife was a Taurus. My wife was a Taurus. And when we would fight, it was just like two bricks trying to move each other. So, uh but uh, but I do like with with Scorpio though it seems like everyone I've ever run across tends to have this way about them where they they're louder with the things that they don't say they'll keep more to themselves and that permeates through them louder than their than their actual words they seem to be a little bit secretive sometimes um, for for reasons that I can't quite figure out um, I did have this my roommate actually was a Scorpio when I lived in Louisville. And uh, she seemed to be very, very paranoid all the time. And uh, she would add, the closer we got, she would start, like, letting me in on why she wants to keep things secret. She always thought people were out to get her or that, that uh, somebody was plotting something against her or something like that. And I remember my grandfather would always, he would always, like, he had a really bad temper, by the way. That's that's one thing, too, the Scorpio temper isn't, isn't, isn't something to play with. I've, I've learned the hard way many times. Uh, but he would, he would always... Throw in comments like this. Oh, they think I'm stupid. My grandfather had an IQ of 163. Wow. The smartest man I have ever met in my life. You know, no bias intended. I don't say that just because he's my grandfather. Um, to me, I'm not one of those types of people just because we share blood means something. <laughs> you know, I'm not like that. So, honestly, the most intelligent man I've ever met in my life. And, and he would he would get so mad thinking that people think he's stupid. You know, and and when when a feeling like that, when an emotion fixed water, so the water's fixed in one place, and it's fixated on itself, is what a fixed sign does. So, um, but uh, with Scorpio, though, with any of the water signs in general, they tend to they tend to be a, a really quiet about their emotions, but you see it, you feel it, just like the water, just like the undertow in the water. When you step in the water, it can be like the prettiest looking little stream, you know. That, but when you stay, you feel it. You may not see it, but you feel it. Do you understand? Yep. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, so just like like with my grandfather, my Scorpio grandfather, if he was pissed off, you knew it. You felt it. You knew it. You know, there was no question. No, there was no, you know, and at that point, uh, me personally, it doesn't really particularly matter anymore. Uh, is if, if I know you're a fixed sign, I immediately tell myself, okay, if it, if it turns into an argument, I have to be the one that backs down. Yeah. Because if, yeah. if somebody's not aware of that, if they're not aware of astrology and they don't know how it works, two fixed signs going at it is not cool yeah. at all. Like, it, it is, it can turn into the biggest battle. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't uh, don't like to get into an argument with Scorpio. They can, uh, they're very, very, very well known for holding a grudge. For a long time, a long time, and that's what they're that's what they're represented as the the scorpion. You know, when you least expect it, they're gonna get you. you think, as soon as you think they forgot about it, they're they're gonna get you. They will. I promise you. I've seen it happen a million times. He, he managed you know? about the nicest guy, I think. And certainly, I would Thank not you. think of staying with anyone that wasn't. But I say he's got about ten percent of things. That he's very, very picky about, and I don't know what the ten percent is until I step into one. Oh yeah. But I learned over three weeks how to jump back real fast. 
Yeah. And I think I'm not bad at it now. Yeah, you, Naya's been great. But, you know, the car wreck also has changed me a lot, too. That, that would change anybody. Yeah. Well, not only that, but uh, it, it's it's very important, too. A lot of people get confused about this with astrology. Is uh, It's very important because there's, when it comes to the, just any of the energies, you know, we, we generally talk about the sun sign when it comes to, you know, so so that's like your outer personality. And your moon sign, if you could, if you could picture it like, like uh, your sun sign is your vehicle. That's what gets you around. That's what does all the maneuvering. And the moon sign is the person driving it. So, like, if I have a moon in Virgo, it's like I'm a little Virgo who's operating this Aquarius vehicle. Yeah, kind of like that. But um, essentially, it's very, very important to whatever energy predominates to try to transcend the, the negative qualities. You know what I mean? Like, there's obviously duality shit. There's positive and negative to everything. So, yep. uh, it's all a matter of, of, of how to balance it. That's the tricky part. That's what I don't like about it. If you got to figure out how to how to balance it and how to arrange. If you could imagine the way I the way I just picture this whole thing anyway, um, a good analogy would be like it's it's kind of like a a bubble with uh, two different uh, like oil on one side and water on the other, and it's equal. It's exactly equal, and it doesn't really matter how you shake it up. The same amount of oil. And the same amount of water is still in it. That's how it is with positive and negative, light and dark, good and bad, yeah. right and wrong. The list goes on, you know. So, so figuring out how to place things in certain ways and where to put them and how to focus on them in such a manner that you are able to focus on the light more. It's not that the dark isn't there, unfortunately, in this place. It's not that it's not there. It's just that you put it in a place where you don't have to pay attention to it all the time. And that's the tricky part. That's the part I hate about it. So um, uh, after I trail off on that, but with, with astrology, in, any of the energies, any of the signs are the same way. And I think most of us learn how to do that at some point in time. So, uh, but I do know that for fixed signs, it's difficult. Well, so, what my my moon sign is Capricorn. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Did you say what is it? So what does that mean? I don't know anything about this stuff. Capricorn is cardinal earth. See, that that's the thing, too. With all the elements, you have uh, you have the qualities. Cardinal, mutable, and fixed. So, And they essentially are what they sound like. Cardinal is like causality, element of fundamental importance, you know, uh, initiating, starting, you know. Uh, the mutable, obviously, is subject to change. It's very mutable, and fixed is fixed. It's there. It's, you know, whatever energy governs it, that's where it is. So Capricorn is cardinal earth. Um, with the earth element, sometimes because, because, you know, the earth energies just feel and operate so much differently than any of the lighter energies, um, that, uh, it, it's, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult for me to explain it the way it is the other ones. But Capricorns though, when it comes to the, 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 the personality of the energy is very tenacious. That's why I, I'm convinced that that's why you're able to, to do what I said. You know, I said, I'm very, I admire you. For being able because that's the Capricorn energy in general. I, I always use this analogy. I say that a Capricorn can chop down an oak tree with a butter knife. Yep. If, if, well, if that was their prime objective, if yep. they had to get that oak tree down and all they had was a butter knife, you get you a Capricorn and they will get it done. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> so they don't let nothing get in their way. They will that's just chop true. and chop, chop and chop, and eventually might take three or four years. But you'll take another chip out of that oak tree and the, and the job will get done. That's, yeah. So. Capricorn. Okay, so the tenacity is the, because I know my Aquarian is footloose, fancy free, fly around in freedom, freedom, freedom. That's all. My Aquarian screams freedom. Be free, yeah. be, be free. Yeah. And the other side of me is don't ever stop. And that must be the Capricorn side. And those are the yeah, oh, I would definitely say so. Because I have an Earth moon, too. My moon is Virgo, which is mutable Earth. Um, it, it could be a little bit more flexible, but obviously with the uh, with the mutable energies, uh, they, they kind of get a rap for not being the greatest initiators, but very, very adaptive, you know. So I don't really have too, too much initiative energy in my astrological chart. I'm fixed Aquarius, obviously, is the sun and mutable Virgo, which, and, and I... It kind of—I hate to use astrology as excuses for some of the things that I do, but it just is 
entirely too convenient to say, oh, well, that could be why I can tend to see something that needs to be done and, and just easily say, nah, I don't know. <laughs> right now, you know, so, uh, I don't know. It's like I said, though, this astrology is something that I've been just kind of not just studying, but actually using in my day-to-day -day life since I was about 19 years old, keeping it for the most part to myself. Uh, not a lot of people are really open-minded to hearing that. Uh, and well, what, I, you know. what, I, what I like about what you're doing is, is whenever you said the moon changes the tides, folks, these planets do matter. And whenever you take that stuff, use that energy that's been around forever and explain people in real life, not with big astrological words that nobody understands, but this is how you're going to act day to day. This is, this is how it's going to, you might react badly. So you might want to watch this. This is how you use it to your advantage. That's what I see you're doing with this. Now, whether it's Aquarius or everybody, I love that you're doing it that way because it takes it out of Ua -u land down yeah. into kind of a scientific, practical day to day usage way that people can go, Oh, Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's me, and I can do that. And I like it that you're doing that. I think it's very important. That's, yeah, that's the thing. That's pretty much with all of this when it comes to, even if it's on like a spiritual topic, I know it's much more difficult to do it when it comes to the other side and all that stuff. And it's it's very difficult. I I, I, I backed off and, and, and have been trying to analyze a little bit. But with anything metaphysical, as it were, anything that... Uh, that hasn't been conventionally accepted. You know, the, the guys in the white coats haven't said, okay, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I, there is always a way to explain it so that everybody can understand it. This is why I can't stand new agers because uh, there's a lot of things that the new agers do that are, that are very good ideas. They have a lot of good philosophies. But at the end of the day, it's like way too mainstream and trendy. And, and, and it's, it's like a movement to where it's just the idea of all the fluffy words that nobody, you know, such ambiguous, vague terminology. Well, it, it, it turns into this thing where it seems like they'll, they'll just use all of this rhetoric and, and ambiguous terminology to, to, to brag about how enlightened and evolved they are. And then when somebody doesn't understand it, they, oh, you, you're asleep, you know, you're not evolved like me. And I'm like, well, man, to, that's, to me, uh, it looks like the Greek and the Roman God stories go to the monotheistic stories, go to the New Age movement, and it's the same thing. They're not using it to help people understand themselves. They're creating a dogma and then following it. And yeah. this, even though they, all of them have, have truths, but mm -hmm. if you create a dogma and don't use it within your life and allow it to mold to each person's life in their own unique way, then it becomes a dogma and it's worthless. Then it causes yeah. damage, and that's yeah. what I see has happened. Oh, absolutely! I see. I still, I still sit and watch it all the time, and and sometimes, like on my filming days, which tomorrow is going to be one, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are my filming days. I sit and I record so many videos, and I slice out most of them because I don't feel like I worded it enough because I don't want somebody who like wants to be on that little new agey path you know to me i see i see very clearly that going in the same place that christianity went uh you know all the other religions that 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 it in at the beginning of it was had a lot of truth but everybody just took it and turned it into this trendy dogma and then all of a sudden red tapes up everywhere you can't do certain things there's rules behind it and and there's you know, people who don't follow it, you know, the people who follow it are better than the other, you know, and yeah. it's like, I, I'm really trying to find that balance. Like, okay, yes, we are in a very new age. We are, uh, the, the times are absolutely different now. And the, and, and the new age religion, every, like, if, if you take it and break it down to the basics, everything that they talk about is, is very, very important. But, Nobody takes it for what it actually is. They take it and they, they hang it up on the wall and put it in a plaque and, and use it as like their award, like they've achieved something so they're better than you, you know. And I, I'm trying to I'm trying to 
And don't take it, this is a moment to moment thing that you're doing uniquely. Your job is to do it different than everybody else. And that's what these dogmas have never figured out. That there is not one way everybody's supposed to follow. There are ideas of how the game is played. Now you play it and be responsible for it and stand up on it. And whether you do it badly or well, in the end, both are good. And eventually you're going to have to get that picture because all of us are doing it very differently. We're all, we are all one God. We don't repeat ourselves. That would be stupid. We are doing this individually, distinctly, uniquely for a reason. We're not doing it. We're not supposed to be copycats. That's just, we would never do that. It's just dumb. So, so the new agers will say, we're all one and you're a creator God. And then they'll try to get people to follow exactly what they've done. Well, that does yeah. that make any sense at all? There's nothing that makes sense about that. If we're a creator God and we're all one, why would I copy you? Why would we right. do that? What would be the point? Now, yeah, I look and at yours and go, well, you know, that's kind of fun. I think I'll take part of that and include it in mine, but not the rest of it because you've already done it. But they don't do that. They start doing this regimented thing that drives me nuts. Dogma. Right, and in that same light, sometimes it kind of makes me feel feel in a bit of a in a weird place because it's like, you know, when you when you have all these people who come to you and they're asking all these questions, it's almost like what I'm trying to get you to understand is that I don't have the answer, you do, but that's the hardest thing to to, to get people to understand. Because yes, it's like instinctual for us. We hand our power over to everybody else. Yeah. We want somebody else to give us the answer. We're constantly looking for that thing outside of us that has the answer, or that outside thing. And it's almost impossible. To, it, I, I don't know. It frustrates me so bad. It, it, does, <laughs> you know? it doesn't work. It never will. And the answer is inside each of us. I can tell you how I hear it. I can tell it how I see it. Maybe you can learn how to do it better for you, but ultimately you've got to listen to yourself. And I say that all the time. I guess I'll keep saying it until I get tired of saying it. And then I'll disappear. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you're doing better than I am. I, I, I envy it. Like, I, I wish I had the the, the bandwidth to, to keep hammering the point like that. But I, I don't right now. That's, uh, that's, I'm, but you know that's what? the difference between the Capricorn and the Virgo, right? Probably. I I, uh, at that butter knife at the oak tree. One yeah, thing I can yeah, say, yeah. one thing I, I like to add in is what Rich said is so true. Now, we have the power ourselves, and Naya will make, you know, 500 videos telling people that, but still, everybody in Naya's family collective, oh, what does Naya say? I've got to talk to Naya, and they make Naya their god, and people need to quit yeah. doing that. We have the power within ourselves. That's what she's teaching us, and so so many people just don't hear it. They don't hear it. Yeah, that, that's why I feel like I'm on a balancing thing. Like, I don't want to start giving out all of my answers because I'm afraid that that people are going to like start thinking that I'm the man with the answer. I don't exactly. want that to happen. So. Exactly. That's the reason why I don't want to be that person either. And that's why I haven't written a book yet. I don't want to be that person. I don't want you to take that book and follow it and underline it. I want yeah. you to get ideas and move on to the next person. There's, there's 7 billion gods on this planet. All of them are interesting. All of them have something to share with you that will right. make your experience better. Reach out, listen to them, then listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. Don't follow anyone. One. Don't follow anyone. Listen to everybody because everybody's fascinating. And once yep. you get better at it, start listening to the animals, then the plants, then start listening to the wind and the rocks, and then you can become a magnificent creator God. But you don't have to follow anybody to do that. Right. All right, this has been fun. Time's up. Hour and a half, and I'm dead. Okay. All right, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all have fun. Yeah, take care. All right.